What's up, Performance Posse? It's Andrew coming to you from the Basement Workshop. Once again, we got a great video in store for you folks here today. We are going to be making some drop shot baits featuring a Do It Molds dual injector this afternoon. And at the end of the video, we're going to have a giveaway. So stick around to the end for the details on the giveaway. Let's get right to making some baits. All right, you guys, here we are over at the bait making station. You can see I've got some plastic pre-poured here. We are using the Dead On Plastics finesse formula for these drop shot baits. I've got my Do It Molds dual injector ready to go. We're gonna do a minnow style bait, so we're gonna go with a straight black on top. We're gonna do a clear belly with a silver hex just to give it a little bit of flash under the water, you guys. Uh, you can see this is the Angling AI drop shot minnow mold. Got my blending block already in place. I've got this set up in such a manner that I've got the top of the bait pointed to the right and the belly is on the left. So you just gotta make sure when you set your mold up, you're orientated correctly to get a proper pour. I've got some measuring spoons here. That's just to get some scoop of flake into the uh, clear plastic. And then this little booger right here is super important. This is an infrared thermometer. The reason that's so important, you guys, is when we're making two colored baits like we are today, you want these plastics to be as close as humanly possible in temperature. That's gonna prevent A, bleeding, and B, it's gonna keep those two plastics from peeling apart at the seam where you get two different colors. Um, so I'm gonna heat this plastic up off camera, you guys. Then we'll mix in the black on the right-hand side. We'll throw some flake into the clear side and we'll shoot some of these baits for you. So guys, a couple of things that I've learned about Dead On Plastic since I've been using it for about a year now is, I don't know if it's the humidity in my basement or what exactly it is, but it seems to be bubbling up more now than when I first got it. Uh, I've had this, this gallon of plastic for a few months now, and I, I'm guessing it's the humidity in my basement, but um, one of the things you can do to kind of combat some of those bubbles if you don't have a degasser like some of the bigger guys have, um, is you can hit this with a heat gun and it'll pop some of those bubbles out of there for you. And the other thing that's really key to dead on plastics, you guys, is getting that temperature up above 350 degrees. I've found that 350 seems to be the magic number to get these baits to really set up and cure nicely. So I'm about at that 350 point right now, you guys. I'm going to set the camera down and I'm going to hit this with the heat gun try to pop some of those bubbles out of there uh, and then we'll get our colorant added in and we'll shoot some of these baits you guys all right like i said i'm just going to hit it really quickly with the heat gun knock some of those bubbles out of it real fast just a couple of seconds you guys doesn't take a whole lot but it really does help uh, beat some of the bubbles out of the plastic it's looking better already we're going to go ahead and mix in our colorant and our glitter We'll do the glitter on the clear side first. And this is a relatively fine glitter, you guys, so a little bit of it's gonna go a long ways. I'm gonna use, this is a quarter of a teaspoon, but I'm not even gonna use a full quarter, so probably an eighth of a teaspoon is all we're going with right there. Go ahead and give that a good stir. That's gonna be good, you guys. Like I said, that little bit of flake is gonna go a long, long way because of the size of the cut on that flake. And then with the black, you guys, we're just gonna load it up. It's not even gonna be about counting drops. We just want a nice, thick black so we get a solid black top to this bait. So we're gonna load that up real good. That should be plenty. Give that a quick stir as well. Oh yeah, nice and thick. Yeah, that's looking really good, you guys. We're gonna shoot the temperature on this real quick, see where we're at. I got a feeling we might need to pop this back in the microwave just for a few seconds to get that temperature back up above 350, but that's all right. Like I said, 350 is really the magic number. Yeah, we're down in the 320 range right now, so we're gonna pop this back in the microwave and I will get right back to you as soon as it is ready to go. Quick, quick stir here. at 340 so probably another 20 seconds and we're ready to shoot you guys all 
All right, you guys, you can see that I do have my glove on because when this comes out of the microwave, it's going to be about ready to shoot. We want to be safe. This stuff is, like I said, 350 degrees. This metal injector gets relatively hot, so we want to be uh, nice and safe on that, you guys. Try to do this in a ventilated area if you can. I've got the window open right above me down here in the basement shop. Uh, the nice thing about the dead-on plastics, you guys, is it doesn't really smell that horrible, so... Um, I've had some other plastisols that just absolutely stunk. These are both right at 355 degrees, so that's going to be perfect, you guys. We'll draw some of that up into the dual injector. Tip that back a little bit so that the excess can... Get that lined up. Get that nice and square. If that's not square in there, you guys, you're not going to get straight shots, so... We got it nice and square. We're just going to ease the pressure on down on this thing. Hold it there for just a moment, you guys. Make sure that cavity's nice and full. This is going to prevent air pockets and denting. And that should be plenty. Pop off that sprue just a little bit. Suck that back up. And then purge the extra back into the cups. We're going to let this cool and we're going to see how we ended up here, you guys. All right, everybody, I went ahead and I let that mold cool down. I demolded it, gave these guys a quick bath in some cold water. That just helps the bait set up a little bit faster. I'm trying to use the white flag here in the shop uh, to give you guys the best possible look at how these baits turned out. Um, I'm really happy with this batch in particular. A lot of times when you do black and clear, the black really, really wants to bleed down into the clear and on this particular run we got a pretty good separation of belly and back i think you can see it really here when i flip to the belly that's when all that flake really starts to shine again you can see the clear belly and then we'll flip to the solid black back um, i'm going to come over here to the table and i'm going to talk to you guys about rigging on this bait and then we'll get some more um, details on the giveaway as well all right, you guys, you can see I've got several of these baits laid out here on uh, just a white little piece of carpet. Just kind of helps them show up a little bit better on camera. Um, let's talk a little bit about rigging for these guys. Like I said, 98% of the time, you guys, I am drop shotting this bait. Um, whether it be for largemouth or smallmouth, this bait right here uh, had tremendous success with the largemouth on in particular. Um, and then this color here, this is our spin on Morning Dawn. This is a great smallmouth color. We call this Miami Vice. It's got the pink belly, uh, purplish blue with some highlight and some uh, pearlescent in it. Just kind of gives it a really good shimmer. Uh, it's a really good smallmouth bait. Um, rigging wise, like I said, drop shot, just a nose hook on a drop shot almost all the time. The only other rigging option that I really use for this is a jig head. I just went ahead and grabbed a watermelon red one because I had it handy and I rigged it up. Um, we'll do some tight lining with this, you guys. When you find some finicky suspenders, don't be afraid to tight line this bait, especially this color in particular. It's really going to mimic a minnow. Um, so don't be afraid to try tight lining this. You know, you find those tough suspended fish that are 30 feet down, over 50 feet of water. Um, just get yourself a jig head with a 90 degree line tie and tight line it down there. Um, don't work the bait much at all. Just kind of let the natural waves of the lake and the quiver of your hand do the work for you, and you'll be amazed how many of those finicky suspenders you'll be able to catch on this bait as well. All right, you guys, we've made the baits. We've talked about how to rig the baits and how to fish the baits. The only thing left to talk about now is how to win the baits. It's real easy to do, you guys. All you have to do is be a subscriber to this channel, smash that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, maybe let me know what the biggest bass you've ever caught on a drop shot is, and then share this video with your friends so they can get entered as well. It's not a big bass contest by any stretch of the means, you guys. We're going to pick a random winner. We'll do that on, say, we'll make Halloween the cutoff date. So we'll use 1031 of 19 as the cutoff date, and then we'll make an announcement shortly thereafter, and we can figure out how to get these baits sent out to you. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. Until next time, everybody, tight lines.